Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the first episode of the AD Prophecy Report, where we review current news and events and their connection to biblical prophecy. I'm your host, Matthew Shanche. If you want to keep up on the latest prophetic events, make sure to join Amazing Discovery's bi-weekly newsletter that keeps our followers informed for the times we live in. You can join for free just by heading over to welcome.amazingdiscoveries.org. Understanding prophecy is the key for anyone who wants to understand the times that we live in. In the past few weeks, the world has seen a major disruption to normal life that's unprecedented in modern history which makes it even more vital for us to understand the conditions of the times that we live in. Prophecy is the means by which we are to prepare for our future and provides a sure foundation for our faith. As Jesus stated in John 13, 19, Now I tell you before it come, that when it come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. With one of the highest ranking U.S. government officials making headlines in 2019 regarding their devout Catholic views, Attorney General and Knights of Columbus member William Barr made bold statements that many have seen as crossing the line of church-state separation. In a call for, quote, moral order, Barr made policy decisions based on his desire to spread his Catholic faith using his government position. Prior to Barr's nomination, he appeared at a Senate hearing where objections over his nomination were made based on his membership in the Roman Catholic Order, the Knights of Columbus. Let's take a quick look over some of the initial rites and rituals of this order to better understand why there would be objections made at a Senate hearing. The book Knights of Columbus, a complete ritual and history of the first three degrees, offers a peek into what principles must be accepted in order for one to become a knight. On page 37, it states, Knights, brothers, we are now engaged in the noble work of our order. Remember your promises and prove yourselves true knights, loyal sons of the Holy Mother Church. Page 45 asks for obedience, but obedience to who? Quote, Do you pledge yourself to obey the church in all that relates to faith and morals? The initiate must say, I do, in order to continue. Page 85 states, As Knights of Columbus, you must be leaders. You are sons of the Old Mother Church, who is the divinely appointed Mother of Men. But the most chilling part is found in how the order is conducted internally. In true accordance with military and fraternal usage, superiors are to be looked up to as guides and to be obeyed in all things pertaining to the discipline and welfare of the order. That is to say, if a superior in the order gives you a command, the lesser is obligated by oath to comply without question. In an article from catholicnewsagency.com, it points out one of the glaring issues with Barr's nomination. As a member of the Knights of Columbus, Barr, as a part of his initiation into the order, pledged an oath to protect the interests of the Pontiff of Rome. The Senate questioned where his loyalties would lie. The article states, quote, A practicing Catholic and a member of the Knights of Columbus, Barr said in his confirmation hearings before the Senate Judiciary Committee that he did not believe his faith would hinder his ability to serve as an effective attorney general. While the nomination passed, Barr quickly showed his actions speak louder than his words. In October, Barr gave a rousing speech alarming even liberal Catholics, stating that secularists were, quote, a threat to democracy. An article from The Guardian stated, quote, Prominent liberal Catholics have warned the U.S. Attorney General's devout Catholic faith poses a threat to the separation of church and state. After William Barr delivered a fiery speech on religious freedom in which he warned that, quote, military secularists were behind a campaign to destroy the traditional moral order. Among the militant secularists are many so-called progressives. But where is the progress? We are told we are living in a post-Christian era. But what has replaced the Judeo-Christian moral system? 
What is it that can fill the spiritual void in the hearts of the individual person? And what is the system of values that can sustain human social life? The fact is that no secular creed has emerged capable of performing the role of religion. This is not decay. This is organized destruction. Secularists and their allies have marshaled all the forces of mass communication, popular culture, the entertainment industry, and academia in an unremitting assault on religion and traditional values. This term, traditional moral order, is well known inside the Catholic faith. This tradition and definition of morality Barr is referring to is the same as is taught in Catholic doctrine, promoting well-defined religious doctrine from the head lawmaking position of the United States government. But what are some of the morals of the Catholic social teachings? Let's look at liberty of conscience. That is, the right for an individual to think freely for themselves, which is guaranteed in the Constitution of the United States. In his encyclical letter of August 15, 1854, Pope Pius IX stated, The absurd and erroneous doctrines or ravings in defense of liberty of conscience are a most pestilential error a pest of all others most to be dreaded in the state. He furthered his thoughts on this, calling for a curse to be on anyone who, quote, asserts the liberty of conscience and of religious worship, and all such as maintain the church may not employ force. This social teaching was the basis for the office of the Catholic Inquisition, now called today the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith to perform its duties which included torture. A Catholic priest by the name of D. Noia said in a 2006 article from The Telegraph, torture was regarded as a perfectly justified, legitimate way of producing evidence, and it was therefore legally justified. What about the death penalty and the common good as defined by Catholic social teaching? On this, Pope Pius XII said, It is reserved to the public power to deprive the condemned man of the benefit of life. By his crime, he has dispossessed himself of the right to life. The Catholic saint, Thomas Aquinas, further established this social teaching, stating, Therefore, if a man be dangerous and infectious to the community on account of some sin, it is praiseworthy and advantageous that he be killed in order to safeguard the common good. The way they define common good is exactly the opposite as the way most define common good. It's not enough to use the same terminology and just assume that they mean the same thing. This is the same moral social teaching that Barr swore to uphold and protect in the Knights of Columbus and the same moral social teaching he is pushing for now from his government position. One of the more disturbing decisions was when Barr reinstated the federal death penalty and immediately scheduled five executions. Some breaking news out of the Justice Department. The Attorney General William Barr now saying the federal government will resume the death punishment after nearly two decades. Let's bring in NBC News Justice Correspondent Pete Williams with more. Uh, Pete, what do we know? Well, the Attorney General says he is ordering a change in the lethal injection uh, system used for prisoners at the Terre Haute prison where the federal death penalty has been carried out by lethal injection. Uh, and he has ordered the government to resume the death penalty. And federal government has long had the death sentence, but it, there's only three people that have been put to death in the federal system since the death penalty was reimposed in the modern era after the Supreme Court stopped it in the 1970s. So these five that have been scheduled to receive lethal injection all have exhausted their legal appeals. Attorney General Barr says that given its, its legality and given a way to do it that will avoid these, some of these legal challenges over the three drug protocol, it's time to, re to restart it in the federal system. This policy change becomes especially concerning when considering the Department of Justice, led by Barr, has recommended as recently as March 21st that the Constitution be suspended during this public health crisis allowing the government to detain people indefinitely without trial. This work has paved the way for future persecutions of those who maintain their Protestant positions. One might ask, 
Of the two oaths William Barr took, one with the Knights of Columbus and one with the American government, which one is he obliged to uphold? Chapter 13 of the Book of Revelation warns of this power and what its aim is. Starting at verse 11, the Bible tells of a beast that comes up out of the earth and had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. On the surface, this imagery doesn't seem to allude to any particular power or have any particular historical context. But a deeper study of the 13th chapter of Revelation will reveal a remarkable record of history and offers a picture into the world's future. To learn more about this powerfully prophetic chapter and its connection to our time, head over to the Amazing Discoveries YouTube page and check out Two Beasts Become Friends by Walter Veith. The beast that comes out of the earth is America. Its two horns are the principles of church and state, which, when separate, are Christ or lamb-like principles. But we see this power will speak as a dragon, which is to say it will speak as Satan does, by force. Verse 12 continues, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, which the Protestant reformers identified the first beast as the Roman papacy, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, stating America will enforce a worship system that is based on papal teachings. Verse 13 states how they will get everyone to accept this system of worship. And he doth great wonders, so that he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Verse 14, And deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles. The Bible shows that deception by means of great wonders and false miracles will trick minds into acceptance. Which goes on to say, Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, showing this beast has authority saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. This is a copy of what the first beast, Rome, had during its height of power. That is to say, the unification of church and state, and the ability to mandate worship. This is the same goal of the Knights of Columbus. Verse 15 goes on to show what happens to those who do not accept this way of thinking, which will be disguised as a common good, stating, causing that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, which, as we've seen, is in harmony with social teachings upheld by prior popes. Verse 16 and 17 shows what the culmination of all these events leads to, the mark of the beast. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. The Bible predicts the laws of America will be changed to reflect those of Roman theology and bring about a system of worship enforced by the civil government of the United States. It shows that the American civil power will inevitably enforce worship principles based on Roman Catholicism. As the Bible states, anyone who does not follow this worship will be killed. Let's take a quick look at some of the prominent roles that Roman Catholics play inside the U.S. government. Along with Barr, six of the nine Supreme Court justices are Catholic. Jerome Powell, Federal Reserve Chairman, Gina Haspel, Director of CIA, Gavin Newsom, Governor of California, Andrew Cuomo, Governor of New York, Nancy Pelosi, House Minority Leader, Joe Biden, former Vice President and current Presidential Candidate, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, House of Representatives, New York.
With all of these governing and legislative officials sharing their Catholic faith, are the legislative pieces in place to, as the Bible states, make an image to the beast? But there's no need to fear. As Jesus said, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Let us not live by fear, but by faith. Be empowered by your own study of the sure word of God. As it says in the book of Proverbs, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Prophecy was given and to be understood so we could be prepared to make the right choice when the time comes. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch the next episode where we look at major ecumenical moves made by the papacy to unify the world religions. Make sure to subscribe or follow to stay up with the latest news and information. May God bless you and keep you always in the name of Jesus.